Anybody who sees this kit will immediately recognize Warhammer 40,000 fan favorite character, Constantine. The Cybersteed, Lord Commander of the Astra Militarum and the Imperium's number one horsey. And kind of a fun detail they threw into this kit is it actually comes with his best buddy, Arcadian Leontis. It's kind of like a fun little extra. Now, when this model first came out, it got a lot of negativity, and I think it's actually somewhat deserved. A lot of people said that it didn't feel very 40K, and I tend to agree. Now, there's a lot of different feels to 40K. Space Marines feel different to the Sisters of Battle, the Sisters of Battle are very different to the Orcs, and everything is really different from the Tau. So it's kind of hard to pin down exactly what makes a grimdark 40K model, but it's kind of not this guy. I mean, it's a gold dude on a horse, and 40K doesn't really have gold dudes on horses. Age of Sigmar has a lot of gold dudes on horses, but for 40k, it's just this guy. I think a lot of it has to do with the Games Workshop paint scheme they went with. It's a little bit too clean and a little bit too fantasy. I think with a little bit of clever changing of colors and schemes and textures, I can make this guy feel like the foot slogging World War II inspired general that he was always meant to be. In his unpainted gray, I think he already looks better than the Games Workshop paint scheme. Seeing everything mid-tone gray, nothing is jumping out and it's easier to appreciate the silhouette. I want to get far away from the standard color scheme, so it's good to see him naked. I have to be very mindful of what I'm going to do to cover him up. This is actually Sean's Horse Lord, and Sean's guard are painted ultramarines blue and light gray, and I want to keep those colors to make him feel like he's part of the force. It makes more sense for Constantine than the other epic heroes in 40k because he could reasonably have a few different outfits. Imhotet the Stormlord's armor is literally his skin, and Gilman wears the Armor of Faith, loaded up with his Eldar waifu's mystical powers, so it would be weird to change their colors, but Constantine probably has a full closet full of the latest fall fashions. I primed this model black and gave him a Zenithal of Ultramarine Blue. I want to keep him cold in color, then I Zenithal to cold gray over this. This two-step will give me all my values and give me a head start on colors. I picked out anything that would be hard to reach first. This way I can be sloppy and I'll have the entire rest of the model to clean it up. Constantine's cyber body should look well trodden, and I painted it a cold gray on the limbs with some orange brown in the joints. He's slowing down in his old age, but a little WD-40 will bring him right back. I shaded his limbs with some black paint to give him more contrast, and then a dry brushing of silver. This gives me the glitter factor of metallics while letting me play around with color. I threw a null oil wash over all of this to shade the recesses, and then old Connie's metal body was off to the races. Now for the armor. I mixed ultramarine blue with some black paint and put this over the bottom third of the armor. Then pure ultramarine blue in the middle. Then I mixed in some white paint and put this over the top third. I went back and forth with my three colors, glazing to get a smooth gradient, and then I thought the contrast wasn't quite intense enough, so I threw some black paint over the bottom. He's looking sharp in his horsey dress blues. A dry brushing of silver adds a weathered look and catches on all the raised trim and rivets of the armor. Already, he's looking less like the noble and majestic Shadow Fox, and more like a horse that actually gets things done. I'm almost done with Constantine, and the color that Sean picked for his army is Ultramarine Blue, which comes from Lapis Azuli, which is a really interesting color. I don't think there's any real Lapis Azuli in modern paint, but it's a really interesting color because if you add just a little bit of black, it becomes gray, and if you add just a little bit of white, it also becomes gray. And I think that desaturation actually helps with Warhammer 40k paint jobs because you really want them to show off that utilitarian look. And so it kind of takes them out of the realm of fantasy and into kind of a more industrial, more desaturated landscape. With that said though, it's time to add a little bit more color into it. Connie needs some white highlights, and I bought this new paint, Transparent White. This should be the perfect thing for it. White paint is always tricky to glaze, it's easy to get coffee stains if it's too thin, and way too much coverage if it's too thick. This stuff seems pretty good, but there's only one way to find out. I glazed it over his horsey leather armor, and it's hard to tell if anything is happening at all. It's very transparent, and it took many layers to start to see some progress. It was working very well, but very slowly. I thinned down a little contrast black templar to paint the crease by his robo mane, and then picked out the rivets and edge with a line of white paint. Flipping my horsey over, I went back to my tried and true white paint, slapping on my highlights, and then thinning and glazing to achieve the same effect. It was much faster, and in no time at all, I had the other side completed, and I would say it's about the same quality, but y'all will have to let me know. This stuff is pretty interesting. It's very transparent, so it's kind of hard to actually see what your brush is depositing. But that does let you get some pretty smooth transitions, but I think it comes down more to painting preference. I would rather do a pretty darn good job in three layers of paint, as opposed to a very good job in 20. I like to see results quickly. 
I did the same thing on Leontis, Constantine's Chewbacca-like best friend, making all of his clothes match. And it's cute that Leo likes to dress the same as his pal. Or maybe he's just jealous of how good Connie looks. Now I've got a very limited palette going and I decided to add another color, Royal Red. Red is the color of important things in Warhammer 40k, so having a little splash of color on an otherwise dark and desaturated color scheme will jump out. Now I had a very difficult choice to make. What color for the decorations? My initial thought was gold, and I painted one half of Constantine's chest Imperialis gold, but on the other side, I painted it white so I could compare the two. The gold feels fake. Would Connie really wear gold? I think he's secure enough that he doesn't need to glitter. He's got it going on. The armor is just to keep him safe. I decided to go with white for all the decorations, keeping my palette the same with a little bit of gray on the bottom and white on top. Then a wash of watered down null oil. Another thing I have never seen on Lord Solar Paint Jobs is decals. There is plenty of room. I put the Astro Militarum command symbol on his front and I loaded him up on the business end. Big old Cadia and the 77th markings. I glazed some blue and black over the decals to blend them into the paint job and a little bit of sponging for paint chips. I love a good decal and it adds, I don't want to say realism, but I think it takes him out of the realm of Age of Sigmar, big gold hero on a horse, and a little bit more into the crazy ostentatious world of the Imperium of Man in 40k. Just a couple of things left to do on this sucker and I think I'm gonna add another color. I put a reddish brown on the reins. It's so cute that Leo thinks he's steering Constantine. Connie calls the shots around here. From battlefield commands to what direction they're headed, Leo is just along for the ride. And you know what else Constantine loves? That's right, our Patreon. We have monthly terrain packs. This month, it's the Plasma Pipes, a totally tubular set of power pipes, plants, generators, and roboskeleton workers. With magnet slots, this energetic set is ready to crisscross a battlefield. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on at Eon's Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain, follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. On Connie's robotic eye, I taped off his head, leaving a cone-shaped hole. Then I airbrushed a spot of white right on his eye and over that a spray of red. A little extra dot of white on the eye itself and this gives the impression of a beam of light that falls off the further away you get from his eye. Connie has the eyes of an eagle. I painted up Lord Solar's screamy face and base coated the few parts that'll be gold with a red brown. Red has been working really well on top of the Ultramarine's blue, so this base coat will tint gold with a nice warmth. And having his helmet be blue and white, this becomes a halo, adding a tinge of 40k's religiosity to the figure. Now for that sword. I base coated it with a silver and for the power sword glow, I went with red and black. I glazed this on, making a transition in the middle and I kept fussing with it. Brightening the highlights, making the red more saturated, but in the end it was just a little… meh. Hmm… I'm not sure about that red power sword. I was thinking red because Constantine's glowing eye looks really cool and Leontis's hipster waist scarf looks really good. And so I thought red would be the perfect thing to tie it all together, but it kind of looks bad and I think it pulls too much focus away. Really, it's just a decorative sword. It's just for gesturing. Leontis is never gonna get into close combat or really do any actual damage. Although one time, this Leontis and my Necron Overlord had a pretty legendary slap fight where I was whiffing all of my attacks and then Leontis would whiff all of his attacks for like three turns in a row. It was glorious and absolutely nothing happened. And I think I want to give that sword another try. I painted over the sword with black paint and then painted one half bright silver and left the other half black. Sometimes the simplicity of a power weapon gets to me. It's a big flat area and it feels like it should be a whole thing, but a nice simple sword might be the best thing in this circumstance. A much simpler sword, but I think it looks better on an Imperial Guard character to have something a little bit less flashy. Constantine is the flashy thing, and this Lord Solar guy whatever his name was. Now it is time to get these suckers on a base. For models with huge bases, it's easier to paint them off the base. For the equine general, he is very clean and cold, so a nice warm rusty base felt appropriate. Cold models look good on warm bases, and clean models look good on dirty bases. When they are opposites, it's easier to see where the model ends and the base begins. It helps that he's on a very 40k base. It's hard to mistake a Reaver Titan's severed head for something that would exist in the Age of Sigmar. But now it's time for you guys to decide. Did I succeed or fail? Did I manage to get Horse Lord out of the fantasy zone and into Grim Dark, or is he still a somewhat awkward model? Does he look better alongside some glittering Stormcast Eternals, or where he should be, riding beside some dark and dour Kriegers with las guns and tactical shovels in hand? I like this model a lot, and Constantine is a great inclusion to 40k. Although not a new character, he is freshly elevated to most important super epic 40k hero. Joining the ranks of Belisarius Call, Morvenval, Gilliman, Gazgul, the Silent King, and the other big expensive centerpiece models. 
Although I like this model, I also kinda hate him, because he lets Sean's Basilisk tanks indirect fire me on 2-ups. But at least this pair impart one important and rarely seen virtue into the world of 40k. Friendship really is magic.